What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're finally installing the coilovers into my Mark IV R32. So let's get to it. So here are the coilovers. They are the KWV ones. Um, I purchased them from a member on the Mark IV Australia page. Now, the reason why I've gone coilovers um, instead of new shocks and lowered springs I guess it's just the fact of it's purely adjustable and I can adjust to any height that I want. If I do change up the wheels at some stage and they need to go a little bit lower, then I have the option to go lower as well. I didn't want to get anything too cheap, like FKs and JOMs and stuff like that being the R32. I didn't want to go too cheap, um, but these came up in a really good deal and they don't really have many Ks in them either. So it should be a case of slap them in and they should sit nicely. Obviously they're not in too bad of a shape which is also you know reassuring buying secondhand parts but um yeah i trust the guys on the page so i know that when i'm buying stuff i'm you know got the peace of mind that they're good quality stuff and not you know broken or whatnot so let's get the car and jack stands and let's start the install Alright, so first things first, check out the car and chuck it onto jack stands. So we've got jack stands on either side. Obviously you want to be on a flat, even surface as well. Um, yeah, safety first guys. You don't want to have any accidents while doing this, so please be careful. Um, the next thing I'll be doing is taking off this 21mm bolt for the um, sway bar link and the shock. I'll also have a jack under here as well, probably under this point just here and once I undo that bolt I'll slowly lower it and that should mean that the spring should fall out easier as well now that the bolts undone I'm gonna go ahead and undo this nut here for this level sensor to remove it especially the top nut it's a 10 mil nut and I've got a 9 mil on the inner holding it in so it does not roll tight on itself. A few moments later. Well, we finally got it off. It wasn't as easy as I thought it was. So after a little bit of research, under here, there are 16 mil bolts here. Apparently you have to undo them to lower the cradle a little bit. That wasn't really working, so I undid the bolt for the bottom control arm. Loosen the top one. And as you can see, I just stood in the caliper to push it right down and she's out all right so now next step is let's undo the shock up here so i think you might have to take the guide liner out i'm going to try it with just a spanner so it's a 16 mil the spanner should work hopefully if i can get enough leverage on it there we go Now we can go ahead and install the KW shocks. So off the original springs, we'll take off the bottom kind of plate with the locating knob, with the plate that KW provided sliding this straight in obviously there's a locating lug here and there's a gap here as well so we'll kind of line them up push them in nice and flat and obviously in here as well on the bottom part it has a locating pin to the center and on the side as well so yeah so the center goes in 
I'm just gonna wanna line it up to where the hole is as well, because it's rubber. It'll be hard to get in there, but it will go in. There you go, and it's nice and flat. The adjustable hat as well. This comes with a, like a bit of a spacer washer for here for the spring as well. Um, I'm gonna set these just at the max height for now, and then I'll adjust it to suit my needs after the install. Now that we have the spring mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the lower control arm back up, these four 16 mil bolts back up, the shock, and obviously I'm gonna put the jack under it just to lift it up a bit so it can all nice in place, tighten it all up, and that is this side completely done. Oh, and also the um, adjustable height uh, arm as well, I'll have to reinstall that. So it's the next night. I kind of ended it after getting frustrated, as you could probably see. I couldn't quite line the bolt up for the sway bar link to the actual rear hub assembly. Turns out I'm just an idiot because the um, the adjuster or the perch for the rear spring, I said previously I had it at the uh, highest point. Turns out it was actually the lowest point. So you don't go that low without having adjustable sway bar links. So now I'm going to take it out. I'm going to readjust it and reinstall it. So another thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to give these threads a good clean. Because they're actually quite dirty and it's actually hard for me to turn these. So I give them a clean and then I'm going to put some of the uh, grease, it's like zinc grease on there, on the threads. That should make it easier for me to adjust these when I need to. Alright, so here it is. It's all zinced up. All I did was put a line on the male thread and just threaded the collar all the way to the bottom and back up again. So it's spread of the, the anti seize or zinc paste, whatever you want to call it. This is stuff that I've used in the past. It's just anti seize lubricant. Um, it does the job. So it makes it easier to turn. I said now it's just so much easier to turn all the way with one hand. So now I'm going to wind it all the way down like I did last time. I'm going to mark on here and I'll mark on the base as well. And then I'm going to just turn it halfway. So I think there's about 19 threads I've counted. So I'm going to do about eight threads, full turns all the way up. Or halfway I guess and then um, once I um, install the rest of the coilovers in the car and let it settle again then I can adjust the height to what I need it so let's get this bad boy back in the car and get the rears finished all right and there we have it now we can start tightening up everything else Alrighty, so now all the rear coil are installed in the car. Um, yeah, you can't exactly really tell that there's been lowered, I guess because I've set it what, halfway. So um, I'm going to do the fronts next, and then what I can do is I can start adjusting it to make it as low. I was kind of hoping when I dropped it at the jack, it'd be like that whole dramatic slammed. But I guess because I did it halfway, no slam. But that's okay. Like I said, once I get it all soldered and get all the front coil overs installed, the complete set already in the car um then i yeah then i can lower it and then um, get the right height sweet and then yeah we'll go from there all right guys so now we're moving on to the front suspension same thing jack out the front of the car make sure you jack out both sides as well not just the one side as the sway bar does need to be moved a fair bit 
uh, down. Uh, if you have one wheel down on the ground, uh, bolted in, you're not be able to push that sway bar down enough to clear the axle when you push down the um, the spindle. So let me show you the suspension that I got. So like I said before, I did get stuff. I did get it second hand. Um, what I'm going to do before I even think about installing these, I'm going to tear them apart. Um, take the top knot off, off the top here. Take this off. I'll take the springs off. And the collar here, I'm going to just clean it all off because the collar will be full of just road grime and dust and debris. So when it comes to adjusting these things in the car, it's a lot harder when you have, um, yeah, all the dirt and the threads. So I'll tear them apart and give them a good clean. Put them back together again. I will fit these top strut mounts. I'm going to get new new top bushes and new bearings for the tops because obviously these ones are very worn out. Here we go. So we got the new and we have the old. And as you can tell, the old one is very much squished down. It's about a five mil difference. So the new one will you know, greatly improve the suspension on the front. Um, that match with the coilovers will be um, a massive improvement. guys it's all been pulled apart and cleaned up so now it should be easier to adjust obviously I think there's still a bit of debris in the threads of the collar itself but all this threads under here and under here as well nice and clean uh, I use a bit of uh, zinc um, paste the stuff here uh, anti seize lubricant so that is on the threads um, on the top part here in here and on here as well so it kind of makes it a bit easier to adjust obviously um, I had to impact this on here trying to hold it down with two hands and turn the nut on is yeah it, quite near impossible um, the top parts of these are they're like a T35 and well Let's just say that it made a meal of my um, Torx bit. So all I did was vice grips on the shock itself, rattle right gun, 21 mil straight down, nice and firm. And yeah, the only thing I don't really like at the moment looking at this is how this is not sitting straight. I'm hoping this kind of adjusts itself on the car on settles. Um, the other ones that came with the car, they were sitting the opposite way. Let's have a look and see. So it's that's the way it's meant to be, and that's the way. But this is all the yellow part on there, which is obviously from the spring. So, but you can't possibly have this. 
sitting that way because oh, you put your bearing in there and he doesn't fit. So if you put it that way, it does fit. And then this doesn't sit on there properly. So the way I've always done it is like that. And then it moves. It moves on itself. So I'm sure whether this was fitted on these because it sits better like that. But then like your bearing there's nothing. Like there's no point having the bearing in there. Because it's just gonna move around. So I'm gonna go with how it's mounted stock wise. Hopefully these adjust or whatever, but we will we'll figure that out. Um, I've just counted eighteen threads as well, um, or eighteen full turns from the bottom to here. It's about halfway. Um, once I put them into the car, then we can look at getting these uh, adjusted to obviously, like I said, the right height to where I want it to to make it look sweet. Um, so now the next stage is to remove the old suspension. All right, so now the next part is 7mm Allen into the actual strut itself. And we have here a 13 to 16 spark plug socket. This actually has a 24mm kind of hex as well, so which you, we can use the spanner. So we put the Allen on there first. Put the socket over the top for the nut. Then we have to use our 24mm spanner on the socket. And then we can use a attachment on the half inch drive and then we can just go ahead and undo the nut from the strut hopefully like that all right so that's as loose as we want it we don't want it all the way off i want it kind of still holding itself so when i do drop the hub or the spindle as I normally say, um, it kind of holds itself to the chassis rather than just the whole lot dropping at once. Um, you can use a ratchet, um, air ratchet, impact gun. Um, mine, my electric one, it doesn't really have enough grunt to get this off. And my air compressor is too small for me to have a proper, decent gun to undo this as well. So I found that this method works really well. Um, yeah, less, um, less chance of a stripping anything really so slow and steady you get there in the end now let's drop down and have a look at the underside of the car alrighty so here we are under the car now obviously you guys you can already tell I've already on the sway bar link obviously because I have them the passenger side already like I said before at the beginning of the video when you go ahead and do the fronts it's best to have both sides of the car up so the whole front end of the car up so when you do go and drop the sway bar link on one side, you have to drop on the other side as well. And then the sway bar does just, just drops by itself. Um, yeah, there's no wrestling it because you won't win. And it's not exactly a fun time trying to force it down. So rather than, rather than just breaking it, go ahead and undo that 80 mil nut. And then you can drop the sway bar links on both sides. It makes your life a hundred times easier. Now the next step is to compress the spring. Now a trick that I've kind of, Learnt over near, only in the past year under the controller, and you can jack up the suspension while it's off the ground, like while the car's off the ground. This will compress the spring enough for you to put spring compressors on it. So, as you lower the jack and lower the hub, the springs are already compressed, um, which makes it a whole lot easier. The only problem is my um, spring compressors are pretty, pretty large and long. So, what I do is, well, what I've done. To this one, I can't even know, I can't remember how I did it to my last one, the last Mark IV, but for this one, I've got a couple of nuts to just to space it out so I can kind of hook it where I need to. And then once I've jacked it up and compressed it, I can hook these on. Obviously, you don't need to go crazy tightening up the spring now, or tensioning the spring, sorry. Um, obviously, because it's already been compressed by the jack, so. All I'm really doing is just nipping it up enough where the 
spray doesn't hit the strut tower. Like that. And I go ahead and lower my jack. Which then still holding tension on the spring. So the next step is to undo a few things. So we're gonna undo the holder here for the brake line. Down here is the brake wear sensor. And then this one right here is the speed sensor for the ABS as well. So we'll go ahead and undo them. Like so. We're 220 for the screw to hold in the sensor bracket and the cables. You also want to undo the level sensor arm as well, so that'll be a 10 mil nut. Once that's out, you can continue removing the rest of the uh, hardware. Now we can go ahead and separate the strut from the hub. You can use a adapter and a ratchet. So here I've got a, a ratchet with an adapter. So this one says 3F adapter. And this goes into the back of the hub. And then what happens when you tighten it? It would go from this width to width this width so point to point which obviously spreads the hub enough so we can free up the strut so without much banging I can actually drop it all the way out just like that we got her out and this is the last corner of the car i'm so excited so let me just show you the comparison of the kw's to the slot to the stock strap Alrighty, here it is so um, hell of a lot thinner and obviously that's top strap now is completely flattened like a pancake compared to the new one so that is just a huge difference honestly these must be the original on my car 231,000 k's so you know what it wouldn't surprise me but now that's out we can put this in and we can have some fun lowering this bad boy So now we're back at the top, we have to do the strut top nut. Now, unfortunately, the old one, OEM one, and the aftermarket one are different sizes, as you can see, 13, 16. Doesn't go on the other way. So, we have to go up to a 22 mil. 22? You believe me. Ah, right, so 22. There you go. Perfect. Now this will tighten up so much, and then the center part, which is the actual shock itself, will just spin freely. So normally you would just use a seven mil, but obviously these are different, being aftermarket, and it's only damaged my T35 or T40. So same again. I'm gonna get some vice grips on the actual strut, and then I can tighten this up by hand.
it was the next day and well turns out that I'm missing some um, caps or um, like adapter plates for the springs so what I was saying before how the spring was sitting crooked it's because you're not meant to be using the OEM plates you're meant to be using the KW plates these never came with them and apparently whoever's had them before lost them uh, whatever the story may be I don't have them anymore so now I am now off of the poor OG Mark IV again this does have the KW V1s in it and right up here is the plate that I need. Gotta pull this apart and get these out and I'll chuck them into the R32 and then she should be done. Oh, alrighty, so we got it out. That's all I needed was that plastic plate. It was like an adapter. So this part here sits on the spring on the top. And I'll show you. Alright, so here we have the stock plate. You put the bearing on, you put the bush on. Like that. Same with this one. Bearing on bush on. Perfect. And then the spring sits nicely on there. So, got to tear, tear this apart and what I'm going to do is just under the wheel, lower the suspension, pop it out and slip it in without having to take the whole shot out. So, and then that is done. So, if you buy KW V1s for your Mark IV R32, make sure it comes with the bloody plate. Alrighty guys, so it's a couple of weeks since the coilover install. I kind of wanted to do the reveal with the coilovers on the car with something a little bit special as well included. So uh, without further ado, here is the Mark IV R32 with coilovers installed and some wheels. It's way too complicated Let's stop this conversation And there you have it guys I went ahead and purchased some Porsche Lobster Claws 19s by 8s in the front uh, And 19s by 9.5s in the rear I'll tell you what, these are my ultimate Porsche wheels I know what some of you are thinking. There's still a gap here. Yeah, and you're right. Um, I lowered the car. Well, I installed the coilovers and they were half set to half height all the way around. The fronts I haven't touched, uh, but the rears, I kind of wound down to about two more threads till the maximum lower level. It's still too high, so I might be pulling out the perches after all, uh, but we'll see how we go with that. It absolutely looks phenomenal. Hey guys, stands out so much on the uh, on the road now. I absolutely love these wheels. Always wanted them. Um, if some of you guys know me personally, the other Mark IV that I had had the Porsche twists. They were a cool wheel, but ultimately the uh, the Porsche lobster claws were the wheels I've always wanted. And uh, yeah, it's one of those wheels where you can't just buy a full set from a Porsche because the rears wouldn't fit because they're like 11 inch wide. So you had to get two sets of fronts. Um, a guy here in Australia had them for sale, actually got them from, from the US. Um, so yeah, so I had to snag them up and do the reveal with the coilovers. Well, there you have it guys. That is the coilover install in the Mark IV R32. So if you enjoy the content of the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a subscription as well, that'd be great. I'm only about 13 away from hitting 100 subscribers so far, so that'd be awesome if you guys can do that. Feel free to share it around. Leave your comments and thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys on the next video, guys. So, cheers.